Our first speaker is uh, Pierre Francois Tools. He's an independent consultant for, since 2014, uh, specializing in cultural heritage and in, the, in particular in the in implementation of the World Heritage Convention. He's also a member of ICOMOS and of the International Cultural Tourism Committee. So uh, I'm happy to invite uh, Pierre Francois Tools. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. Uh, first of all, I have to insist on the fact that, that I am not a specialist of Eric Mendelssohn, but I know the World Heritage Convention a little. So in this paper, I will briefly present some elements about the notion of serial property before giving an overview of the sites inscribed on the World Heritage List that can be related to modern architecture and properties related to the work of an architect. Not forgetting, of course, some elements about Eric Mendelssohn himself and the World Heritage List, so it looks like an introduction to this workshop. So on the World Heritage List, it's, it's quite long to explain all, but there is now uh, 1,157 sites, and it's more easier, it's easier, uh, 900 sites on cultural sites. 900 cultural sites, and there, there are um, 43 transboundary sites actually on the World Heritage List. So serial nomination, a World Heritage Convention, because there is a project of a serial nomination. So I begin with this. The first serial, it's quite older than Eric Mendelssohn. The first serial property was inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1979, the second year of the inscription, and includes three cultural properties, the pre prehistoric sites and decorated caves of the Vesa Valley in France. You can see the cave of Lascaux, and uh, 18,000 years old, about. Uh, Rock Dorin in Valco Monica in Italy, and uh, Abu Simbel and Philae in Egypt, so 3,300 years. The notion was not yet defined in the operation guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. This operational guidelines is the text, is the reference text for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention and for nomination. And this notion of serial nomination will be in the, um, the version of document in 1980. Uh, it is interesting to note that the notion of serial properties was applied only for cultural heritage at first. It was after uh, seven or, or six years for uh, natural sites too. And in um, uh, tw 2005, the World Heritage Convention decided, de decided to allow a serial transboundary or transnational nomination to be registered of the quota of a single ingrid state party. This decision led to the examination of an increasing number of such property, but now it's quite stable from mm, ten years, about 10 years. Uh, various sessions of the World Heritage Committee, the World Heritage Committee is, um, is a meeting, an, an annual meeting, and several meetings uh, between uh, 2008 and 2010. I've clarified the issue related to this property and led to the revision of the operational guidelines, notably on how each element of the series should contribute to the outstanding universal value. We'll talk about this notion after with the other presentation of the property as a whole and to the adoption of a specific format for tentative list. Tentative list is the first step, and after the property has to be inscribed in the tentative list of each country. So it's five countries for this nomination, for example. And after uh, we can, you can uh, present it after uh, for an examination uh, by the World Heritage Committee. So ICOMOS, which is the organization who made the evaluation for the World Heritage Committee which is composed of uh, 21 state parties, but there's a scientific evaluation made by ECOMOS for cultural heritage, for cultural sites, has developed a specific evaluation format in 2009 that takes into account the following question. What is the justification for a serial approach? Or where the selected sites chosen? How does each relate to the other or UV of the property? Does the comparative analysis justify the selection of properties? Are the components of the property related by function? And is there an overall management framework of all components? So this is explained in this uh, paragraph of the operational guidelines. Nominated, uh, nominated serial property includes two or more components. Components should reflect cultural, social, and functional links. Each component part should contribute to the OUV, and 
it's important, provided the theory as a whole, the OUV, and not necessarily its individual component parts of its uh, OUV. So, some recent decision. It's, inter it's, inter oh, sorry. it's important to note that the, in the recent decision of the World Heritage Committee on serial listing, the emphasis on coordinated management on the listed property, both in terms of the management plan and protection and conservation. You can see uh, with uh, Frank Lloyd's right. It's a recommendation as the inscription. The uh, property is inscribed, but the World Heritage Committee recommends uh, some, some uh, plans to, to make. Uh, and for example, uh, the appropriate coordinated management of the serial property and elaborating upon an implementing management plan for those individual components where they do not exist. So there was no local management uh, local plans for several components in this nomination and it's, it's a big problem. Normally you have to be a, a local management plan for each component of the property. Same thing with Colony of Benevolence. It was uh, the last the last meeting of the World Heritage Convention, the uh, World Heritage Committee. Sorry, uh, with a recommendation ensuring management of the property as a u unified whole, especially that conservation approaches evolve in the same direction. It's quite important too. And another recommendation about uh, Chinese property, stressing and making more expressive for an operational point of view the links between the overall management plan. To, for the property and the other plan existing for individual components. So the World Heritage Committee requests to answer the management of a serial property as a unified world is very important with an effective and explicit operational coordination between management plans existing for the individual component parts of the site and the overall management plan for the property. So uh, we arrive now. Uh, <laughs> for there are very few properties uh, on the World Heritage List that, that are directly linked to an architect before the end of the 19th century and especially the 20th century. Here are three examples. Uh, the first is the um, city of Vicenza with Palladio Villas. It was an extension. At the beginning, it was just the city of Vicenza and the Palladian works, the Palladio works in Vicenza. And after, they, they, they were an extension with his villas around uh, Vicenza. The fortification of Vauban in France with 12 uh, components and not expressed in the, in the title of the property, but the castle and town walls of King Edward in Gwynedd uh, for the castle of the end of the 13th, 13th century uh, with the architect James of St. George with the uh, Capetian style building of the end of the 13th century. We arrive now at uh, something more close uh, with Henrik Mendelssohn. Uh, it is worth noting that it was a serial property concerning uh, the 20th century architects that constituted the first transcontinental series and the one with the most states party at the same time of its inscription in um, 2016. Seven countries. This record was equalized uh, two years ago by the great pattern of Europe for cultural properties. Uh, and if for Le Corbusier inscription, uh, there was um, a first, an, uh, first application with 19 components. We have been reduced to 17 components. Uh, sorry, it was um, even 22 for the first, uh, the first application, reduced to uh, 19. And after, it was 17 when the, the property has been inscribed in 2016. So three have been omitted and one site has been added, the complex du Capitol in Chandigarh in India, which was not in the first uh, application. The property do so has been listed on its third appearance before the, com uh, before the committee. Is, is this is the maximum, three presentations with the committee. So from 60, uh, 65 buildings of group designed by local businesses that survive, 17 had been selected in the submission. So I arrived uh, to the point of the 20th century and architect on the World Heritage List. I will, click oh, sorry. I will quickly mention many of the properties inscribed in the 20th century that can be linked to the modern movement or there are a form or prefiguration of it. They are rather single monuments, but they are also in the sense of the convention, some historic ensembles or urban centers. So we can see the Stocklet House in Brussels in Belgium, Centennial Halls in Roclave, 
we spoke about it yesterday. Uh, in Germany, uh, sovereign coal mine industrial complex in the sense because in the o OUV, the architectural design is uh, mentioned uh, as a part important of the OUV. Van Nel Fabric in the Netherlands, Tugeden uh, Villa in Bno in Czechia, Sydney Opera House in Australia, in Oceania, or in other continents. You have also Urban Center, three years ago, Ivrea in the Piedmont near, uh, near, not far from Torino, industrial city of the 20th century, or Asmara, a modernist African city in uh, 2017. In America, we, are also, we have also Sud Anniversaria of Caracas in Venezuela, or uh, the, the New City of Mexico, uh, inscribed in, in 2007, and uh, from Israel, White City of Tel Aviv in uh, 2003. It was important to notice uh, the, effect, uh, the study filling the gap uh, the, the year after, with the lack of uh, inscribed properties about modern architecture, but we can see we are going to see that the the gap is filling now uh, quickly <laughs> because there has been after a lot of increase of uh, of inscription. So we have also um, the Chile House in Hombu. Uh, it's a building. This building is part of a larger complex. So in Hombu, but is mentioned in the title in the title title sorry of the property. Uh, all this is for the comparative analysis. Uh, it can be mentioned after in a comparative analysis. And uh, we, we are arrived uh, to the serial properties devoted to several achievements of one architect. Uh, he has a unique properties that have been listed and whose architect name has been put forward for the in the title and in the OUV, an, uh, Outstanding Universal Value, that has been recognized by the World Heritage Convention. So we have a church in Uruguay, Riedveld Schroeder House in the Netherlands, and Luis Balagan House and Studio in Mexico. So one monument, one architect, and one property. Uh, after, uh, this brings us to the serial properties devoted to several achievements of one architect. We have Orta for Brussels in Belgium, and uh, two years ago it was uh, uh, the works of uh, Plesnik in Ljubljana in Slovenia. We will notice that these two serial properties are also linked to a single city, Our nouveau Orta, Brussels, not elsewhere. This, uh, this is a particular case of Barcelona with two serial properties directly linked to the work of an architect. Gordi was not from Barcelona but from Reus in Catalonia. Uh, Swiss sites were inscribed in the first inscription in 1984 and four included the Nativity facade and the crypt of Sagrada Familia in uh, 2005 from a new submission of 12 components. But work proposed of, uh, of Gordi works elsewhere in Catalonia, of elsewhere in space, in Cantabria for example, were not selected. And the other example, Luis Domenech y Montaner is not mentioned in the title but the nomination is two of his building. Another pro there is a, uh, an example of urban center linked to an architect who supervised the overall plan and produced several major buildings, is Le Havre in France with Auguste Perret. And we come to other property with Le Corbusier, which would come closest to an inscription proposal around the work of Eric Mendelssohn. It's the work of uh, Frank Lord Wright, with uh, eight, eight buildings. In, in its evaluation, ICOMOS evokes the possibility of a future extension of the series to include five other buildings located in the United States of America and one in Japan. And then now, the architects who are already widely recognized on the World Heritage List, particularly in the OUV of the properties that, that have been inscribed. We have two examples, Walter Gropius. Walter Gropius is recognized three times, not in the title of the property, but is widely mentioned in the OUV of these three, three sorry, properties, Fagus Factory in Nathan, Germany, Bauer's site in Germany too, the three sites in Germany, and Berlin Modernist Housing States in Germany too. So the gap is, uh, is filling <laughs> now with some, uh, uh, some inscription. Oscar Niemeyer, we can say three, even four properties just for him. In Brasilia, with the urbanist Lucio Costa, 
in Pampula Modern Ensemble in Brazil. And this year, because there was an extraordinary session of the World Heritage Committee in January this year, with three uh, sites in danger, we have been inscribed. Uh, the, you, perhaps you have mentioned the historic center of Odessa, for example. Five? Ah, two, three, three culture, three culture. Yeah, what? Ah, family, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so five, five, five sat as an extraordinary session. No, it was just three. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so three sites, and so with uh, the site in Lebanon, in Tripoli, you can see it. And you can even uh, include uh, Le Havre, because in Le Havre, one of the main buildings, the Volcan, it's uh, the center of the city, was built by Nimeyer too. So quite uh, even four properties uh, with Oscar Nimeyer. And there is also the tentative list. Uh, don't, not inscribed yet on the World Heritage List, but they are managed to. And one of the most important is uh, the architectural works of Alva Alto, inscribed uh, two years ago. So the project is in progress. Uh, some inscription of the tentative lists are older, uh, tw uh, five, 15, and are not active yet. Here it's active, and it's important because it's in Finland only in Finland, and there is no modern architecture on the World Heritage site in Finland, and quite nothing in Scandinavia, so it's another, another geocultural region of Europe, uh, not uh, recognized as modern architecture yet. And for your proposition, there is also uh, there is, uh, Tel Aviv, there is some properties in Germany, in Poland, in Wroclaw, there is uh, all Centennial, it's quite different, but it's, there is a link too. So it's quite important to note that that uh, it's um, a country which is not recognized yet for modern architecture. And it's just interesting to note uh, also that uh, the Alva Alto route is recognized as a uh, route of uh, itinerary cultural rules of the Council of Europe, itinerary cultural du Conseil de l'Europe in French. And Israel is, is, uh, is linked with this, co is not parts of Council of Europe, but uh, is also a site in a uh, uh, one, right <laughs> one yard site, Iter Vitis. So it's possible to have a cultural route, not with the United States, but with the European country and Israel. More for the record, more of the tentative list in Hungary with Andor Lechner, Henri van der Velde in Belgium, but is recognized in both with a uh, work in Weimar. More and more on the tentative list again in uh, Lisbon, Lisbon in Portugal. The title is in French because we, we can we have two languages to make the property the nomination dossier, English or French. The modernist scent of, of Dinia in Poland, uh, inscribed uh, in uh, 2019. Again in Ukraine in Kharkiv, uh, this site on the left. And uh, also in Tehran, Iran, uh, uh, two years ago, so uh, perhaps it's in progress too, and in Uruguay also. So we arrive at Eric Mendelssohn and the World Heritage List very quickly. Several property refers to Eric Mendelssohn, properties already inside. In general, in the historical part of the nomination file, this allows us to recall all the exchanges between this, this architect, architect who was whose work has been recognized on the World Heritage List. So the Centennial, Centennial Halls in Wroclaw uh, in Poland, the, criteria, the second criteria, the criteria was proposed by the state party, mentioned Mendelssohn. The combination of this building material were used by Berg as a structural element uh, to a great extend determined key position. And uh, Bressel was one of the leading centers of modern movement in Europe and was shown by the work of Mendelssohn, Paul Six, and other architects. So it was mentioned in the OUV proposed by the State Party in uh, 2006, but it was not, um, it was not uh, keep in the, in the description. It was just this part was kept by the World Heritage Committee. Uh, in, in, uh, we sp uh, spoke about it yesterday. Uh, th in the dossier of uh, architecture of Frank Lord Wright, uh, there is a lot of uh, mention about uh, Eric Mendelssohn. It's not, 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 uh, 
the Alstein Tower. It's completely original, a strongly biomorphic word notable for its fluidity of form, sense of movement and symmetry. So uh, there is a, a lot of uh, mention of Eric Mendelssohn in this, uh, in this application dossier. There is also a quote of Eric Mendelssohn in the nomination dossier of, uh, of, of Wright. You can see it. Enough time, but it's important to note the only comparison in the comparative analysis with a work of uh, Mendelssohn was made in Van Nel Fabric with a red flag uh, factory in St. Petersburg, Leningrad, St. Petersburg, uh, in Russia today. So we can see it very quickly. It uh, meets the problem of integrity. It, uh, I think it was in uh, 2015 and after restoration in 2018. It has been restored, but I don't know where uh, well exactly. So as a conclusion, how can I say uh, very quickly with Eric Mendelssohn, uh, World Heritage, in the context of the, uh, the nomination of Mendelssohn works, it is therefore important to consider the overall management, protection and conservation. As this will be a serial nomination, the justification of the selection component is very important. This is the integrity of the series. Each component must carry a share of the proposed OUV, but there is also the question of the integrity and authenticity of the components. Compositional integrity, integrity of the building themselves, possible degradation, and integrity of the environment as well as authenticity of the environment. For example, Wasman House, there is no problem, I think for me, in my opinion, there is a possible OUV for this, uh, for this building. There is an integrity of comp on composition, authenticity, but there is a problem of integrity of the environment with a with, uh, building very close to the, to the building and authenticity of the environment too, because when it was built, there was this window uh, to see the hill uh, towards Jerusalem, etc. And today, there is uh, some building very old, very tall, uh, just for 200 meters, something like that, perhaps a little bit more. But it's a problem. It's not. Uh, it can be. We can be. It's a problem, but it's just to to show an example about that. So as far, very quickly, as far as the criterion one is concerned, so uh, it will be talked after the criterion. The uh, criterion one seems to be difficult to meet for such a serial nomination. Uh, in general, uh, this criterion one is to represent a masterpiece of human creative genius. There was uh, more than 250 sites, but uh, last 10 years it was uh, about 20 sites only. So, uh, however, the special case of the Einstein Tower, it's Potsdam. Uh, I think it's a little bit different, which was the subject of an article of ICOMOS thematic study on the heritage of astronomy. You can see it here. But um, the title of this conference, Architecture of Dialogue, makes Criterion 2 obvious to me. We have seen the ex exchanges uh, with Wroclaw, with Wright, etc., uh, with the work of Eric Mendelssohn itself. The criterion two to exhibit, you can see it. And uh, in the evaluation of a work of Le Corbusier, it is mentioned that it is very important to take account the respective cultural works and the influence that the works had. So perhaps this criterion is more obvious for a nomination, uh, a serial transboundary nomination for the works of Eric Mendelssohn. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you.